In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at rendering our scene. So I'm going to go to um, suplugins.com, and this has the SU Podium plugin, and this is one of my free, um, uh, my favorite free ray tracing renderers for SketchUp, and it's really nice rendering in a very easy application. So I'm going to go to the free evaluation and download the appropriate one for us. And the nice thing about it is that it's really only about a 6 meg file. And then what we need to do is quit our, our program. We need to quit SketchUp and then install the SU plugin. Now when we install it, make sure that you're installing it into the correct version of SketchUp. I have SketchUp 8 installed, so I need to change that to 8 instead of 7 because it has both copies installed right now. Anyway, it's now installed that application. I can go back and open up my Google SketchUp 8 and you'll see there's that Podium V2. I'll put it up there at the top and I'll open up that building. And so we've got a definitely a, a little bit um, better scene now that we've added a whole bunch of different um, objects to it. And you want to go ahead and um, create different views. So one of the things that I would suggest is creating scenes. So if I go up to Window, Scenes, let's create a new scene for view number one. And I, I'm not even going to worry about the names right now. And then I'll just kind of move over here and do another one, view number two. So you can see I can animate between those scenes. But it allows me to get to the, the views that I want to um, render with pretty quickly. So there'll be, our, there'll be another one right there. So of course we can actually do animations between these as well. All right. Anyway, we can see these up at the top and go between them very easily. And now what I want to do is go to the render um, settings for um, Podium and the first thing we want to look at is the options. And the reason why is because we need to make sure that we save the location. I like to choose custom and, and don't change anything. That way it will save in the same location as the file currently is. Now we've got some other formats that we can do. I'm going to use the PNG. We can even do PNG transparent so that the area outside of our model will be transparent. So that could be kind of nice. With our environment, we can change things. Um, about our different environment, interior, exterior. We can do a whole bunch of different things. We can put in physical um, skies and soft omni lights, caustics, clay, a lot of interesting things that we can change here. And you'll just have to play around with those to see what happens. Then um, we need to go and take a look at our materials. So this is where things get a little bit different. Um, if you want materials to be reflected a certain way, then you want to be able to actually go and edit those materials and, and select that material. That way I know that I have that material selected. Then we go to the material properties for Podium and we can change things like transparency and reflection, um, refraction, which is kind of like simulating glass, bump, depth, or something like that if we want to give things a little bit of texture. I'm not going to worry too much about that because um, I just want, don't want to take up too much time. If we also want to affect things like create lights, then we go up to the light properties and create lights for our scene as well, if we want to be able to have lights that are in certain areas. I'm not going to worry about that myself, because um, I just don't want to take up the time once again. Now, one of the last things that I do want to do, though, is I want to hide all the edges that I don't want to render. So in order to do that, select your objects or your components, go up to the window, and let's go to Styles, and I'm going to go to Edit and Turn Off Edges. In fact, I don't even think I have to have um, any objects um, selected. It just does it for all the objects. That way, I'll make sure that I don't render all those edges when I render my scene. So let's go ahead and save our scene um, just before we go ahead and render. That way, we know that we are rendering it in the same um, folder as the other. And I'll go to my first scene and let's go and render this particular image. So I'll go to render current scene. It'll process all of the um, materials and geometry 
in the scene. It might take a while. You can see that this is a pretty complex scene. So the more um, materials and, and objects and geometry you have, the longer it will take to process. So it's just something that you have to get used to. All right, so now it's rendering. Sometimes we can come up with that preview button. It's rendering pretty quick. And of course, depending on how fast your computer is, um, it may take a longer or slower time to render. All right, now I can preview it as it's rendering. So I guess that was just kind of uh, calculating what the scene would look like. And now it's actually doing the rendering. Now it's going to take a while to render, like I said. But you can see it's doing one pass right there. And now it's going to start to do another pass. And you'll see each time it passes through the file, it's going to change the quality and make it a little bit nicer. And it'll add other details as it goes through as well. I'm going to go ahead and pause my render, or pause, I'm sorry, the uh, screen capture. I'm going to come back. Um, hopefully this will be done. All right, so it's now done rendering, um, but I can definitely see that this is a very light render. This is not great looking. Um, I do want to point out, though, if I go back to the folder where I have my files, here it is, SketchUp 3, we should have the PNG saved in that same folder. So there is the PNG that I just rendered, and that's actually what the quality looks like. And you can see it looks okay, but it's definitely a little light. The reason it's light is most likely because I've been playing around with the different settings here. So it was it was probably because of the environment setup that I did. I did interior PS, and I'll just change it to the default and probably re-render at that point. Because now when I re-render this, it'll, it'll probably look a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and come back when it is finished rendering this new version. All right, my new file has rendered. And if I go back to the folder where I have these files, there's the new PNG. You should be able to open it up. And you'll see that definitely looks better. It's got a little bit of blueness going on there. Um, that could be something with my lights, or it could be um, just the materials that I have. But at least this gives me a little bit um, better quality and of course I could always open up this file in Photoshop or whatever photo editing application that I might need to um, change anything about it. So um, go ahead and do render um, all of your different looks. So you can go to each scene and do a new render and of course it'd be nice to have at least you know maybe five renders or so for each one so you can show different details. You can get in pretty close to see what the details are. You can show details about maybe what it looks like from above so you can see your roof or whatever. Be really nice to have lots of different renders so you can see um, the quality of your scene from all different angles. And uh, that concludes this tutorial, so go on to the next. Thanks.